हेलो ऑल आई एम प्रोफेसर निकले सोमदुतीकर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल एंड एनवायरमेंटल इंजीनियरिंग के आई टी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस थर्ड सेशन ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट कोर्स इन फर्स्ट टू लेक्चर वी हैव टॉक अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट वॉट आर द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट नॉलेज एरियाज सो दीज आर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट कोर्स सो इन टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल सो वॉट आर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस सेशन वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल एंड वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द फेजेस ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल so this is the outline we are going to discuss about the project life cycle and the phases of project life cycle so now what is the project life cycle so the project manager and project team have one shared goal is to carry out the work of the project for the purpose of meeting the project's objectives so whatever the objectives of project that we have to achieve as a team in that the project manager will be there project team will be there so they have to work collaboratively to achieve the whatever the objectives of project are there so project life cycle when we talk about we have to understand in general system so every project has a beginning a middle period during which activities move the project towards completion and an ending so we can say at it is having the start it can have the interval and it can have the end so in between that the middle portion or the middle period where actually all activities take place it is very important for the project manager so ending can be either successful or unsuccessful and as a project manager or as a engineer we have to focus on the successful completion of a project so basically what is the project life cycle so project life cycle divides the sequence of operation of project into different phases regardless of scope or complexity so it doesn't matter whether it is having the simple project or it is having the complex project we have to divide the entire project life cycle into the number of phases so any project goes through a series of stages during its life so we have to understand what are those stages so the project activities must be grouped into the phases to facilitate the project manager and his team to plan and organize the various inputs effectively so number of activities are there so that we have to group into the phases such that it will facilitate project manager and his team to plan and organize and whatever the inputs we are getting that should be effectively implemented in the particular project it also helps in identifying the deviations and thus helps in decision making with regard to continuation or termination of the project so it is very important life cycle will help you to take the decision if anything is happening which is not planned or which is not expected so in that case we can take the decision whether we want to terminate the project or whether we want to continue with the project so whatever the deviations are happening changes are happening from the plan that we have to understand so generally there are these four phases are there so first one there is the initiating then planning implementation and closure so taken together these phases represent the path a project takes from the beginning to its end 
and generally referred to it as the project life cycle. So, in this case, you can take see this is the project life cycle. So, first we are going to start with the project initiation phase, then project planning phase, then execution, and at the end there will be the closing. So, initiation phase means what? Generally, we are going to have any idea related with the project. Suppose, in terms of construction project, we are having the land. If we are having the good budget, we want to develop that land. So, we have to start with the idea. What kind of project we can start there? Whether we can go with the residential projects, whether we can go with the commercial projects, if the residential project, whether we are going to construct the row houses, bungalows or apartments, what amenities, facilities we are going to provide. So, all these ideas will came in the mind. And once we finalize, initiate all these things, we are going to go for the planning. So, in the planning, we are going to decide what things we have to construct. We can define the scope. Then we can plan, we can schedule the activities, we can define the timeline, we can allocate the budget to that, we can allocate the human resources to that, machineries to that. So, all these things will come under the planning. Then the third one, it is the execution. So, this is the actual work which is going to happen on the ground. So, once we are ready with the plans, once we are ready with the building plans, once we are ready with the scheduling plans, we are going to start the execution of the work. So, how we are going to execute that? So, that is the execution phase, actual work will be going on, actual material will be get consumed on the site. So, that is the phase and after completion, after execution, we are going to go for the closing phase of the project life cycle where the life of the project or whatever the things that we have constructed is going to be end. So, that is the closing cycle or we are going to complete the project as far as the project management is concerned. So, first one initiation, initiation phase. So, during the first of this phase, the project objectives or need is to be identified. Feasible study, what we can construct that need to be identified. So, issues with the feasibility, can we do the project, should we do the project. So, all these questions we need to ask and we have to address those. Then once recommended solution is approved, the project initiative delivered to approve the solution and project manager is appointed. Later one, the project deliverables and the participating work groups are identified and the project team begins to take the shape. So, first we have initiated the idea, we have allowed, allocated one project manager, then according to the his or her suggestion, we are finding out other participants who can give their inputs into the project. So, those groups are identified and we are going to construct the project team. Then approval is then sought by the project manager to move on the detailed planning phase. So, once all these things are completed, we have to go for the planning phase where the project solution is further developed in as much detail as possible and the steps necessary to meet their project objectives plan. So, in this step, the team identifies all of the work to be done, the project tasks and resources requirement. So, whatever the project tasks need to be completed, whatever the resources are there that we have to identify and this is also we are going to refer as the scope management. <coughs> Sorry. So, the project plan is created, outline the activities, task dependencies and the time frame. So, project manager coordinates 
the preparation of a project budget by providing the cost estimates for the labor equipment all these things and we are going to head towards the execution phase so before heading to the execution phase documents with the quality plan providing the quality target assurance control measures along with the acceptance plan all these things are done under the planning phase then the third phase it is the implementation or the execution phase so whatever idea we have initiated according to that whatever the plans we have made that actually we have to implement on the ground so that is the execution phase so where actual resources we are going to consume so the project plan is put into motion and the work of the project is performed so that is the implementation phase so it is important to maintain the control and communicate as needed during the implementation so in this phase progress is continuously monitor and appropriate adjustments are made according to the situation or whatever the variance are happen according to that we have to take the decision and we have to implement the project so people are carrying out the tasks and progress information is being reported through the regular team meeting project manager uses this information to maintain the control over the direction of the project by comparing the progress reports with the project plan to measure the performance of the project activities and take corrective action so this is very important to complete the project within the given timeline so status report should always emphasize the anticipated end point in terms of cost schedule and quality deliverables so each project deliverable produced should be reviewed for the quality and measured against the acceptance criteria so again and again we need to do the check and last one it is the closing phase so during the final closure or completion phase the emphasis on the releasing the final product or the deliverable to the customer handing over the project documentation to the business terminating the supplier contracts then releasing the project resources and communicating the closure to the project to all stakeholder so this is the last remaining step is to be conducted lesson learn studies examine what went well what didn't and these things we can use or implement in the new project so these are all phases so generally whatever projects we are going to have we have to execute it properly we need to have the experts in that particular phase to complete the project within the time within the allocated budget and at the end all goal should be achievable so that is the project life cycle so this is one of the quote related with the project management so good management it is the art of making problems so interesting and their solutions so constructive that everyone wants to get to the work and deal with the team so basically project management it is the team task we are going to act as a team we are going to complete as a team and we have to generate the interest within the various stakeholders to complete the project within the time and allocated budget so thank you all we will see you in the next session